Whether you're using a keyboard case, a Bluetooth keyboard, or a USB keyboard, in this video, I'm going to give you my complete guide to keyboard shortcuts in GarageBand. Let's go. Now, GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad is all about the touch experience, yeah? So why on earth would you want to use a keyboard? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the very cool shortcuts that we can use that can actually improve your workflow. Even if you love using the touch screen, some of these will really speed things up. So let's jump in and get started. Oh, and before we get started, if you've never connected a keyboard to your iPhone or iPad, whether it's Bluetooth or USB, there's a video linked right there and down in the description that you can check out that will get your keyboard connected and ready to use shortcuts with GarageBand. And to make things even easier for you, I have a free downloadable PDF document with all of these shortcuts over at studiolivetoday.com slash shortcuts. And it even has conversions for your command and option keys if you're using a Windows keyboard with your GarageBand on iOS. So with all that out of the way, let's jump in and get started. Keyboard shortcut number one, and there are timestamps to all of the different shortcuts in the description if you do want to jump around. And this is to start and stop playback. We just hit the space bar to start. And again to stop, super simple. To move forward in our track, we tap on the period or full stop key. And you can see here that this moves us one bar at a time. And no matter how zoomed in or zoomed out you are, it will still be one bar at a time. And to go backwards, you guessed it, you hit the comma key. And this is a really quick and convenient way to jump around in your project if you want to jump between bars to do your editing. To create a new track here, we hold down the Option and Command, or on a Windows keyboard, that's the Alt and the Windows key, and then we hit the N button. And this will bring us into our instrument browser. We tap on which instrument we want, and it creates a new track ready to record. Let's go back to our track view by tapping on the track view there, and you can see here it has added this to the very bottom of our project. Duplicating tracks is something I do all the time in GarageBand and to do that with the keyboard, we select the track and hold down the command key and hit D and there you go, it's created a duplicate track. That's Windows D on your Windows keyboard and you can see if we go into the mixer here, all the plugins and EQ are copied across from the original track and if we want the audio to come across, we just copy and paste the audio which we will cover later in the video. If we want to delete a track, let's say we didn't want this duplicate track, we can select that and now it's Command and Delete or Windows Delete and that will delete your track immediately from your project. Now you may have already noticed this, but we can navigate through our different tracks by using the up arrow to go up in our project and go track by track, or the down key to go down, and this works on any sort of keyboard just using your cursor keys. We can also solo one individual track by selecting the track and hitting the S button, and that will solo the track if we play by hitting our space bar. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here. And stop that one. There you go, to unsolo, we tap the S again. To mute, we use the same thing, but with the M key, if we don't wanna hear these vocals, we hit the M key, the vocals are muted, we hit play. <laughs> And once again, to unmute, we hit the M again. And we can, of course, use the up and down here to mute several tracks and to solo several tracks at once, if that's what you want to do. It's a convenient way to navigate around your project if you are doing your mixing process. What if you make a mistake? Let's say we've deleted, command delete, we've deleted our vocals. What do we do? Well, we can quickly undo that by holding down our command and hitting the Z or the Z key, depending where you are in the world. And that is our undo. It's the Windows key and Z or Z if you're on a Windows keyboard. But what if we did want to delete that? Well, we could use our shift key to modify and redo it. So we'll hold down shift, we'll hit command and then Z again, and that will redo that action. Still not happy, command Z or Z and we'll undo. So you've got undo and redo with your command Z or shift command Z. And remember again, your command key is your Windows key on a Windows keyboard. If you're getting value out of these keyboard shortcuts and can't wait to try them in your projects, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed for more videos in the future. Let's dive into some more advanced features here. So what if we want to select all of these items? Well, let's hit the return key to go back to the start. If we hold down command or windows and hit the A key, look at this, it selects all of these items. Now, why is this useful? Well, you may want to actually move everything across like that. If you want to move your whole project, if you haven't started it right at the start, you can select everything and move it all together. So it is a convenient way to select everything, command or windows and A. Now, not surprisingly, if we want to delete things, we select on the item here and we hit the 
delete key. And we can go ahead and select and delete whatever we want. If you don't have a keyboard, you can tap on there and then tap the delete key of course as well. And if you want to undo those, don't forget, you've got your undo there ready to go so that you can undo as many things as you've done if you've done something wrong. One thing I find really handy is our navigation keys. So we can use our left arrow to navigate to the left. And you can see here, it will select each item. And then our right arrow key, not surprisingly, goes to the right. So that's super handy if we wanna move backwards and forwards because you can use your up and down again, and then use your left and right to move through your different audio items on your different tracks. And even better than that, if we wanna select multiple items, we can hold down shift and push the left key. And there you go, you can see that it's selecting those. And of course, we can do right as well to select multiple items. Let's show you that again here. If we start in the middle here, hold down shift and hit left, that's gonna select them to the left. And then if we move around without holding down shift, it's going back to that. If we do the same again, hold down shift and hit right. As long as we're holding down shift, anything we select, is going to be highlighted. Now we can't move up and down to select multiple things that way. We can only select things within the same track, but your shift and right and left arrow keys are a super useful way for selecting multiple items if you're making changes in your projects. One function I use a whole lot here in GarageBand is splitting and using the keyboard makes it super simple because we can simply select the item here and then find the place where we wanna split it and then hold down command and hit T. And it's immediately gonna split our item right at that place. Place. We'll try it again, Command T, and try it again, Command T. So that's a whole lot quicker than going to your split menu and getting the little scissor and flicking it down. We can split our item into four different sections here just using the Command or the Windows key and T on our GarageBand projects. Now our next function is the join function, which unfortunately doesn't work on audio items. So we're going to have to go and find some MIDI to show you how we can use join. So we'll jump up to the top here. This particular one here, we've got these two MIDI parts here. They're using the same instrument, but what if we wanted to join these two together? Well, no problem. We know how to select these. Hold down shift and hit right. We've got the two of those selected. If we now hold down command and hit J, take a look at that. It actually joins up these two MIDI sections. So this works with MIDI and it also works with drums. If if we do the same thing, shift and right, and then command and J, it's gonna join those tracks. So it only will work with our MIDI or our virtual tracks. Our audio tracks, they can't be joined together. You can use the merge function to join your audio tracks, and I display that one in another video, which is linked up there and down in the description. Let's now take a look at cut, copy, and paste. So first of all, to cut an item, we tap on it, and like most things, Command and X will actually cut it away from there. If we Command Z again, that will undo it. If we wanna copy it, not surprisingly again, Command C, and that copies it, and then we wanna paste it somewhere else, we get our playhead exactly where we want it to be, Command V, and there you go, it pastes it in. Remember, you have to paste in the same type of track. So audio track to audio track, MIDI to MIDI, drummer to drummer, you can't paste onto a different type of track. Again, we'll Command Z or Command Z to undo that. So there is your cut, your copy, and your paste. Now, looping a track is something that we do an awful lot here in GarageBand. And again, we've got a very quick option for this. If we tap on a selection here, if it's a virtual instrument like this bass and we hit the L key, it's going to loop that bass all the way through our track. So that's a really quick and convenient way that if you've got a loop that's say an eight bar loop, you want that bass to go through your entire track, hit the L key and that will loop it all the way through. Another simple option is to record. So instead of coming up here and hitting the record button, we can simply hit the R button. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how and it will start recording. Again, we wanna stop recording, we just hit the space bar because that's our start and stop. So your R button will set off your recording with whatever track you've got selected ready to record. To enable or disable our metronome, you know we can click or tap on this one here, or we can just hit the K key here and look at that. It'll turn your metronome on and back off again. So if we turn it on, you'll hear the metronome in the background. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how Turn it off by hitting K. How it is I got here and if I'm going up and back on. Under all the complications of my Super handy. And a related option is holding down the shift key and hitting K. And this will actually enable or disable our count in. So we've hit shift and K. If we hit record now, sometimes I there's our count in. How it is I got here. If we hold down shift and hit K again, now we hit the R for record. How it is I got here and it goes if I'm straight going under. In. So whether you want your count in on or off, you can hold down the shift and hit the K key. 
Want quick access to your FX function here to remix your track? Of course you do. And all you need to do is hold down the Option key and hit R. And there you go. It's going to pop up your FX. You can get ready to scratch your way to stardom. And then to get rid of it again, Option and R again. And once again, that will be the Alt key with the R on your Windows keyboard. Automation is something that I use here in GarageBand all the time. And there is a keyboard shortcut. And not surprisingly, it's the A key. You just tap on A and it jumps you straight here into automation so you can slide on your automation slider, add in your automation points and change your volume on the fly. Hit the A button and your automation is gone again. Super handy and super convenient. Spend a lot of time up here in the loops browser. Well, no problems. We got you covered here as well. Just hit the O button and it's going to open up your Apple loops ready to bring loops directly here into your project and make your song sound even better. Now our cursor keys here don't only just work here in our track view, they also work in our instrument browser. So when we're in here, we can use left to scroll through our different instruments and right to scroll the other way. And once we're ready to select, we can just hit the return or enter key and we're right in there ready to go. We're on the homeward stretch here. If we want to show or hide our coaching tips, we hit the H key and this will bring up this little arrangement here. This will vary depending on what we've got on the screen. Get rid of it, hit the H again. If we want to show our help, we hold down the Option key or the Alt key on your Windows keyboard and hit H and there you go. You go into your help view, which again is context sensitive. So it will actually tell you some help for where you are. So if you get stuck, the H key or the Option H is your friend. Oh, and one final tip here. If you want to get the most commonly used shortcuts for your keyboard in GarageBand or any other app, simply hold down on the command key and you'll get this little menu pop up, which gives you all of the different options. You can even scroll to the side to see all of them there. So if you get stuck and you don't have that handy dandy guide, which you can check out down in the description, hold down your command key and you'll be good to go.